CCM's extensive lineup can be quite overwhelming, especially considering the high degree of customization available. Some models can be configured in a staggering 4,000 different ways when you account for hard parts, accessories, and finishes. They also come with a premium price tag for a 600 cubic centimeter single and are seldom practical. The previous Street Moto exemplified this complexity, but the new second generation model has been redesigned to be a more straightforward, accessible, and budget-friendly option. There are two variants. The base model, simply named Street Moto, which features a low-level exhaust, spoked wheels, and an adjustable YSS shock. Priced at 9,995 pounds, it competes with mid-capacity fun bikes like the Ducati Scrambler, Fanuc Caballero 700, and Triumph's 900 Scrambler. The other option is the Street Moto R, priced at 11,495 pounds. This model upgrades to Forge Aluminium Dimag Up 7X wheels, a high-level, larger bore exhaust, a remote reservoir YSS shock, and a carbon sump cover that isn't available on the standard model. Additionally, they offer different color choices. Both models utilize the same chassis and SWM sourced engine introduced with the 2019 Spitfire, which is a positive aspect. Weighing in at 141-139 kg when fully fueled and delivering 55 brake horsepower, it offers a lively and nimble ride allowing you to enjoy a smooth, low RPM experience or unleash its fun potential with a twist of the throttle. Is it suitable for everyday use? Not really, unless you're particularly dedicated or stubborn, but it's not marketed as such. Beginners or tech enthusiasts may find it lacking. There's no ABS or traction control, and the LCD dashboard provides only the essential information. Additionally, it doesn't meet emission standards and requires individual type approval for road use in the UK. This straightforward approach will appeal to some riders, even if it might challenge those accustomed to the conveniences of mass-produced bikes. There's something refreshing about hopping on a brand new motorcycle and simply riding without the need to adjust various modes or rider aids. The throttle operates via a traditional cable connected to a throttle butterfly, placing your comfort, enjoyment, and safety firmly in your hands. That said, it's not an unsafe choice. This is a well-crafted machine that exceeds expectations for a bike handcrafted in a small Bolton workshop by a team of just 18 employees. It features a well-mannered engine and a chassis that effectively balances comfort and support. We'll delve into the specifics of the two models shortly, but there's also a subtle difference in their character. The base model offers better low-speed behavior, feeling a bit smoother and more stable, while the Street Moto R sacrifices some of that initial friendliness for a more spirited, agile ride, making it better suited for navigating B roads than for leisurely rides through quiet lanes or city streets. Small manufacturers often struggle with fine-tuning chassis setups due to limited manpower and budget constraints, which can hinder their ability to optimize spring rates, damping, and geometry. However, this isn't a concern with CCM. After five years of developing a range of bikes that share core components, along with thorough and ongoing testing, R&D specialist Ben spends a significant amount of time pushing prototypes over Belgium's challenging cobblestone roads. The street motos not only handle exceptionally well, but also provide stability and decent ride quality, even on the roughest Lancashire roads near CCM's base. That's an especially neat trick for such lightweight bikes. Base is 141 kilograms full of fluids, while the R's lighter wheels and lack of inner tubes shave 2 kilograms. It's a fine line between retaining brake and cornering support, as well as keeping things plush when you're not riding elbows up and levering it over. The difference between the Street Moto and Street Moto R's suspension proved largely visual, with both versions offering ride quality and handling with no discernible penalty for choosing the more basic machine. The main handling difference comes from the wheels, where the Circo 1kg unsprung weight saving at each end makes the arm much sharper steering and sportier feeling compared to the heavier spoke rims, with inner tubes to boot on the entry model. That counts in favor of the R on smooth roads, but owners of standard bikes will be happier rougher roads or surfaces with reduced grip, where the extra weight helps it feel more planted. Neither bike threatened to get unstable, but the R is just that little less sure of itself when not enough taxpayer cash has been spent on road maintenance. Some may lament the switch from a lean suspension to the Thai-made YSS, but they're a well-liked and proven option in the aftermarket world, 
and the extra develop that's been put into these settings means it's actually better in reality. Owners often complain earlier bikes with the Swedish kit can be harsh. Braking on both bikes is by a single J, the one radial four-piston caliper that has nice feel and progression. No doubt partially thanks to the lack of ABS paraphernalia interrupting the connection between rider and friction surfaces. The single piston works nicely for those who use it for fine control at low speeds or teasing the back end sideways with a little bit of backing into corners. If you've learned to ride on bikes fitted with ABS, it's not going to immediately dump you on the floor either. Unless you do something really dumb, it's controllable enough with enough support and feel from the forks that you should be able to handle grip levels yourself. Husqvarna designs from the early part of the century, when the Swedish firm was run by the Kajiva Group, before they were sold to Peerer and began using KTM lumps. The claimed 55 brake horsepower feels about right, and is enough to have a bit of fun with without being too focused for the kind of bike CCM makes. It does vibe, and no doubt hours of high-speed riding would become uncomfortable. But you'd be insane to buy a bike like this and expect to get away with that. Throttle response is good too. Thanks to both a long development life, as well as not having to conform to Euro standards, which make a nice twist grip feel difficult to achieve with the lean fueling conditions they force upon manufacturers. No matter how good ride-by-wire gets, there's still an undeniable satisfaction that comes from physically opening the throttle butterfly yourself. It's worth noting that while all CCMs use the same engine-slash-throttle body design, they have subtly different power characteristics thanks to exhaust layout. The Street Moto's low-level exhaust has slightly smaller bore pipework than the Street Moto R's high-level system, necessitated by the need to maintain ground clearance, a fat header trial in developed limited clearance. So it's fractionally down on power and torque, although the precise difference isn't stated by CCM. But it's also softer at the first touch of the throttle and smoother throughout. If you're not fussed about giving it big handfuls and riding like your hair is on fire, the base model is the nicer bike to ride at slow to moderate speeds. But you'll want the Street Moto R for really having fun. Just the slightest touch of snatch and ass at the first touch of gas, as well as a slight increase in vibes, is made up for by a freer revving and friskier feel, particularly at higher RPM where the larger pipework doesn't hold the motor back like the underslung header.